All right, Coach Ryan, you guys, uh, I, I once saw some guys that you're actively recruiting and a brother that you actively have now with uh, Micah and Bo Jordan. But uh, Bo Jordan, let's talk about Bo Jordan to start out with. Uh, he, he said he's been coming up to some RTC workouts. Yeah. What do, you, what do you like with that product? Well, I know this. I know with Bo Jordan, I've been biking every day this summer and training to get ready for this kid coming in. My God, uh, at the RTC practice, no, no, no coach at 44 wants to get walloped by a, uh, by a freshman coming in. And Bo Jordan brings the intensity, the strength, the skill to really challenge everyone in the room. So uh, very excited about Bo. On many levels, you know, obviously, besides the fact he's a great wrestler, he's a great kid, he comes with the, the, the pedigree the family history, the state of Ohio. So he, he brings a tremendous amount of impact with him. I look at, you know, Nathan Tomasello as well. You know, he you, you got two of the top guys. Nathan Tomasello just won his third junior national freestyle title. That's hard to do. Not many people have done that. Yeah. What do you look at when you see, you know, like Nathan coming in? Is he going to redshirt? I hear Bo's going to redshirt. Is that, is that accurate? Uh, Bo most likely will redshirt, yeah. Bo's going to redshirt, yeah. And Nathan, you know, we have Nick Roberts there at 25. So Nathan and Nick, uh, the plan right now is to redshirt Nathan. Uh, continue to progress with uh, Nick Roberts, so uh, that that's the plan right now. You guys, um, you, you also next year, I'm hearing that Hunter Steber, yeah. Hunter Steber will be redshirting. Is that is that what you guys are going to do? Hunter Steber will redshirt, and Ian Paddock will finish up at 149. You know, the, th the tough thing last year with Ian was that uh, you had a close wrestle off, you know, with 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 Hunter. Ian and I were a close wrestle off, and we never really could allow Ian to grow into a 49 because he was officially backing up Hunter, if something happens to Hunter under NCAA rules, you've got to have the guy close enough in weight to be eligible to go down to that weight. So that was a struggle for Ian. So he wrestled 49 at the end of the year, but he didn't have much time to bump up. We made a decision. Ian is a worker. He's the right guy. He's going to be at 49 this year, and he's had a chance all summer to grow into 49, which he didn't have a chance to do last year at any time in the season. And it wasn't until the very end of the year when we decided you know, Ian, you can now go up under NCAA rules. So Ian is our 49-pounder, Hunter will redshirt. Uh, you got, you know, at heavyweight, you guys got a really uh, unique situation. You know, you got a little guy, a smaller Capone, who grew into a heavyweight. Yeah. I think a great heavyweight, great yeah. on top. He did a great job with his commitment there. And then he hurt his shoulder, yeah. I believe. What do you guys do there? Because Pete can come back for one more year, correct? Pete can come back, but I don't think he's going to. I think right now the plan is Nick Tavanello. You know, when Pete did, you know, Pete came in as a 74-pounder. You know, and, and then moved into 84 and 97, and then did a great job at heavyweight. Was in it was, you know, was was 10 seconds away. The score was tied with Nelson in the dual meet. He was wrestling really well. It was a very disappointing ending to a career that was really starting to blossom in heavyweight. So, so Pete is going to move on, and uh, right now it looks like Nick Tavanello uh, will be our heavyweight. You guys, you know, you got some other situations where Andrew Campitalo is not with this program anymore. And now you're moving Nick Heflin, who's cutting a ton of weight, yeah. fifth twice at 174, now up to 197. How is that development going for him? You know, he's been tremendously committed. You know, he's been working with, um, with the football staff, uh, with Anthony Schlegel. Uh, they welcomed him over there. He's been interning there, which has been a nice opportunity for him as well, because it's what he wants to do long term. He wants to be a strength coach. So he's been with football. They've been doing a great job with his strength and size. He's put a tremendous amount of size on. And, uh, you know, he would be a... You know, he wasn't. He was a huge 74 pounder. So that you know, the, the question mark is this guy's going up two weights. You know, he probably could have gone 84 last year. So he's really, really probably going up one weight. You know, he's probably one weight above where he should. He'd be a big 84 pounder. But the bottom line is, we feel like his best chance to win it, and that's what he wants to do. He's tw he's placed twice already. His best chance to win it is at 97. And if you've got to move someone up, you want to move someone up who loves to eat, who loves to strength train, and nicks that guy. So. Uh, the plan right now is is you know full speed ahead. It's Nick Heflin, 197. Uh, Kenny Courts at 184. Is he going to be yeah. the guy there? You think? Uh, you know, I, I think Kenny Courts can win the NCAA tournament. That's 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 crazy. I think some people may say you're, you you know, got Ed Ruth there and this and that. I think Kenny Courts, when his, his mind's right, you know, he has the ability to be as good as anybody in the country at 184. For Kenny Courts is consistency, and he's been really consistent. When he got here as a freshman. He was out the entire year with an injury, no training whatsoever. He was, got, came back for two months, broke his jaw. So you look at a freshman year that was non-existent. Not only did he not improve, he softened his freshman year. He, couldn't tr he could not work out due to the problem he had. So, so then he comes back, he starts getting going in September, and you see him starting to gain momentum as the season went on. 
because you started to regain conditioning. At this level, you cannot miss a year and be the same person you were. I don't care how good you are. The consistency is critical. So Kenny's been consistent all summer. I'm very excited about Kenny Quartz. You're getting Johnny DeJulius back. He's going to move up from 25 to 33. Logan, yeah. he's going to move up to 41. Yeah. Guys, got a lot going on in your lineup. A lot of, a lot of moving and shaking. Uh, we have a lot of changes. There's a, there's a lot of unknowns. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of unknowns with this group. I mean, Nick Roberts won four tournaments as a true freshman at 25, but to this point, he's still relatively an unknown. You know, what is this kid capable of? He hasn't had a signature win. Johnny DeJulius had a nice win over Gillibon this summer. Which, and, 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 and Zanetta, which makes you feel that, hey, he's really developing. But then he had some losses that were surprising losses. Uh, you're pretty set with Logan, and you're pretty set with Hunter, but in those four, first four weight classes, those first two guys really got to step up. 57, Josh Demas, I thought had a great NCAA tournament, falls short of being an All-American, wins the Battle of Westerville with Jesse Dong. And, you know, when you look at that and look at the tournament he had, falling just short, how much hungry do you think that makes him? And do you move him yeah. up a weight? Yeah, I mean, we're, we've got some issues with Josh uh, outside of wrestling. He's got, a, he's got a shoulder injury. He's got some other issues that are going on. So we're not sure what's going to happen with Josh at this point. 57, 65, we may not wrestle for the season. So, so that's, a big, that's, a big, that's a big question mark for the program right now. Mark Martin. Mark Martin will be at 74. You know, I, I, think, I think looking at 74, um, the weight is loaded. You bring Hal back into the weight class. Uh, at one point last year in the Big Tens, the Big Ten tournament, there were five guys at 174, all who were ranked number one in the nation at high school. All in one weight class, all in the same conference. It's a brutal weight right now. Uh, you know, I, I would probably think that Mark Martin, you know, would would probably become more comfortable redshirting this year. We just, I just don't see how we can do it. Uh, the goal here is to put, has always been to put the best team on the mat. Uh, there are some situations where right now I'm looking at. Not doing that, uh, but I'm not sure at 74, someone's got to really step up in the room for us to sit Mark Martin. You know, with Nathan Tomaselli, you've got Nick Roberts. With Hunter Steve, or you have Ian Paddock. The question right now is, who in the Ohio State wrestling room is going to step up at 174 and make us feel comfortable that we're going to put someone on the mat, should Mark Martin not red shirt, that can get the job done. And we feel that way at the other two weights. What if somebody thought, you know, if the, you know, the comment was made, Ohio State might be raising the white flag next year? Yeah, yeah, that would be that would be everything but the truth. But, but I could see why someone could feel that way. Well, the best guy, your concept has always been your philosophy. The culture has always been put the best guy in the mat. What if Nathan beats Roberts in a wrestle off? What if Hunter beats Pack? We're not doing it. We're going to sit them. Uh, you know, we also can be real about the situation. Uh, Penn State's got a loaded lineup. Minnesota looks pretty loaded. I mean, we we we've been second twice. We've been fifth. We've been sixth. We've been eighth. You know, nobody in Buckeye Nation cares about second. I mean, and that's just a reality of it, and no one here does. We want to be the best team we can. We want to win multiple titles, and I really feel like uh, something, people are going to have to really step up for us to truly fight for a natural title this year. Are we a top ten team? No doubt about it. But are we going to truly fight for a natural title? In 2015, with the horsepower where we have, plus some of the recruits that were active recruiting, I feel that that's a... That's a team that, if things come together, is certainly going to fight for an actual title. Right now, I'm not so sure we're in that position. I think a guy that you're actively recruiting next year will be a senior. He, went, he moved to the Olympic Training Center, mm -hmm. Kyle Snyder. I know you can't really comment on it, but yeah. he's one of the best guys in the country, and I think he's ready to come in and win an NCAA title as a freshman. When you guys get guys like that, that's the team that will be there for 2015. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and again, I can, my comments on Snyder were actively recruiting him. You know, He and Micah Jordan were actively recruiting and until uh, they commit to the institution under, under NCAA rules, my comments are only, yeah, we're recruiting them. Those guys are pretty good. I'm recruiting them. <laughs> All right, Coach, you got anything else for me on the Buckeyes 2013-2014? No, looking forward to getting this thing going.